super cool peeps out there in TV land, it's time for another super duper episode of Math Homework Helpers. Stick around, we'll be right back. This is a show where we get to help you with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. With us today, we have the cool Mr. Cook from Warren Elementary School and the fantastic Mr. Gosnell from Chesapeake High School. In addition, today is a very special day because we have Iman from Norwood Elementary School who will be our guest puck dropper on the Puck to Pick a Prize Ball. Thanks for being here, Iman. Well, welcome, Iman. And Polly, uh, so how have you been enjoying all this snow we've been having this winter? Oh, yeah. I just love playing in the snow and having mm -hmm. big snowball frights. Uh, did, you, did you just say snowball frights? I, I think you mean snowball fights, Polly. I think it's fights. Oh, no. I meant snowball frights. You sure? Um, I almost hate to ask, but Polly, what is a snowball fright? Oh, they're the greatest. Me, Max, Ali have a contest to see who can So how do you make a scary looking snowball? Oh, that's simple. The bigger you make it and the harder you throw it, the scarier it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of interesting, Polly. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's still a snowball fight, though. Well, of course it is. But, You're right. so silly. That's what I said. I said snowball fight. Oh, uh, boy, Polly, you are one crazy puppet. Yeah. Let's I'm go crazy. ahead and start the show. Don't forget, boys and girls, that every caller who calls in gets a prize from our puck to pick a prize wall. Mr. Cook, what are the prizes for today? All right, well, I'm going to have Iman show us, but I'm just going to call them out to us here, guys. Check this out. We have the pencil pack. We have the lanyard, BCPS TV lanyard. Awesome. We have the USB light, and we have the squishy guy. I know. I'm excited, too. Let's try to <laughs> contain our excitement, Iman, but it's the squishy guy. Sounds great. So let's go and get the show started. Uh, the phone number to call is 410-494-1459. There it is right there. Do we have any callers? Well, let's see. Uh, but you know what we can if do? If not, as we're waiting for those callers, we have some homework that I kind of need help on. Me too. Well, I think I would be happy to help you. OK, well, so. Let's do it. So could you read me number one? Absolutely. This, this is a really tough problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Iman has five boxes of picture frames. Okay. Each box contains two picture frames. She oh, plans to decorate the frames and then sell them for $7 each. Can I help decorate them, Iman? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I want to, can I help you? Okay, thank you. I think you. that's okay. I Absolutely. Think so, so how many boxes do we have? We have five boxes of picture frames. Okay. And each box contains two picture frames. All right, so there's two picture frames. And Iman, the businesswoman she is, plans to decorate the frames and then sell them for $7 each. Perfect. So the question is, how much money will she earn if she sells all of the picture frames? Okay. Lots of money! So uh, if, actually, Iman, I bet you could help me out with this because you're such a big fan of the show. I know that I have five boxes, and each one of those boxes, there's two picture frames, right? So what operation do you think I'm using here? Well, obviously, okay, well, Ooh. maybe I didn't know that, <laughs> and maybe it's not as obvious, but okay. So you're right, so we have five times two is 10, right? All right, so we have 10 picture frames total, and each one of those picture frames, you, do you remember how much money we get? Seven. So, there $7. you go, great memory, Seven dollars. great memory. Okay, so again, Iman, talk to me, what do I do from here? Okay. Ten times seven. And how much total do I have? Seven. 
70 bucks. 70. I love it. Is that an answer choice on my homework tonight? Let's it's see. We have A is 17, B is 21, C is 37, and D is 70. I think we got it, Iman. I Rock think it. we did it. Great Iman, job. Are we sharing just the don't money? stop it. I just want to know if we're going to share the money. If I'm helping you do the work, are you going <laughs> to share the money with me? Mm. You're going to share the money with her, Iman? Oh. Oh, we get oh okay. wow. Wow. We get That's, wow. We both get 70. Last time that we'll have Iman on the show. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know what? I Erase the help. That what? we have, we have speaking of Norwood. We do. Guess who's on the phone, Iman? It's Javier. It is it Javier? Javier? I'm not good at this. Is it Javier? 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 It's Javier. Javier? I think it's Javier, but let's ask. Let's ask him. Hey! Javier, are you there? Oh, he has a bad phone connection. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Well, he has to fix that. Fix the. Where's Max? Max fixes everything. Max is a good fixer. Uh, I wonder if Javier just needs, if we could be able to hear him in the studio. That might make it a little bit easier. I want him listening for Javier. I don't hear anything. Well, that's okay. You know what? How about if, well, he is from uh, Norwood, and I think number two might be able to help Javier out. Uh, let's see if we can try number two on Javier uh, on our homework from Javier's school. Good idea. Sounds good. So I'll go ahead and read this out for you. Are you ready? Please, yes. Iman, Iman, you're very popular. You're in all of these math examples. Iman's team safe racer car weighed 314 grams. After adding some washers, their car now weighs 330 grams. How much weight did Amon's team add on to their car? And this is not a multiple choice question. This is a free response. Oh, so I got to figure this out without having a chance of getting the right answer. OK. Well, Iman, since you added the weight, or you and your group added the weight for Safe Racer, uh, can you tell me what operation am I going to use to figure this out? Absolutely. So I have 330. Um, what I like to do sometimes, if I have a zero, uh, I'm going to borrow from here. I'm going to make that a 2 and make this a 10. I'm left with 6. 1. I think we added 16 grams with those. We lost our. Uh, uh -oh. Let's try that one more time. The uh, winter. Hey, here's somebody. Oh, I do hear somebody. Is that Javier? Are you there, Javier? I, I hear that some, phone connection is given Iman? problems. Oh, it has been a tough Javier. connection. I agree. Javier, are you there? Hello. Mm, I don't hear anything I from don't Javier. Hear anything I think we have to hit no on this. Or does it come up? Okay, perfect. it did come up. It hey, worked out just we fine. Safe. We got our winter one, and we I don't are. Hear anything. And it's Javier. Is Javier on the phone? Good. There's Javier. Hey, Javier. Hello. How are you, Javier? Yes. Do you have a question that you don't, we could help you with? Yes. All right. Can you talk? Read it to us, please. Yes. Number two. Oh, it's number, number two. two. Is Perfect. it the one with Iman and the washers? Bye. Was that a bye? I think I heard bye. I think he said goodbye. He didn't okay. Get the well, I guess we answered it. Okay. All right, Javier, we're Let's coming. Let's see what's going to come to you. <gasps> oh, squishy you got guy! the best one. Favorite squishy got guy. Got the squishy guy. Javier, we got the squishy guy coming to you. Iman will bring it to you. Iman, you have a job <laughs> now. Two jobs, dropping yeah. the pucks and taking the prizes. There we go. You so, have a lot of responsibility today. Yeah. <laughs> and Iman, do you know that there's somebody else called Iman yeah, at Norwood? Yeah. She's your friend. She's Aww. your friend? She's, my cousin. She's your cousin? You're, you have the same name as your cousin? That's awesome. Your cousin and did you know that your cousin is calling right now? Yeah. Can you say hi to your cousin? Hi, Iman. Hi, Iman. Hi. Oh, okay. So what's your problem? I think she could what's just be the problem? host. I know, right? What's your problem, Iman? Iman? 
Ryan has five boxes of picture frames. Each box contains two picture frames. He plans to decorate the frames and then sell them for $7 each. How much money will she earn if she sells all the picture frames? Iman? Ooh. This we is a good question. One. We did that question, Iman. Can you give us another harder one? Uh, yes. Thank you. Iman, do you remember what the answer was? How much money you're making? Oh, I wish. I wish. I wish. Then it you definitely have to give us It was the $70 one. You got it. All right, Iman, which other one do you have for us? Um, a parking at uh, number six. Okay. Can you read it to us? A parking accident. It's actually attended by 48 cars in a row. <gasps> He parked six cars in each row. How many rows of cars are there? Write, a, write and solve the multiplication equations to find the number of rows of cars. That's a big problem. Nice, nice. That is a tough one. So I heard 40 are 48 cars in a row. Is that correct? Six rows. And then there's six rows. All right, Ms. Uh, let's see. I got to hmm. figure out which operation we're going to use here. Yes, operation. this one is tough. This one's challenging. You're talking doctor talk. <laughs> Polly's scared now. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I'll assure you that operation has a context in math. Okay. It's we have to make sure that we're math. careful, though. It's not the doctor. Okay. No, are no. Are you doctor math? This is doctor math. I think we are uh, doing division for this one. Do you agree, Iman? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. that Iman, too. We got two, two Imans, and both of them agree that we're going to do division, and if uh, I put 48 cars inside our division house and six on the outside. Um, how many times can six go into 48? Go ahead. Um. Oh, I could. Okay. And how what many were you going to say, Iman, on the phone? So Iman oh. in the studio said that we can skip count by six. Iman on the phone, do you agree that we can skip count all the way up to 48? Yes. Okay. After skip counting from 6 all the way up to 48, how many times do you skip count? Go ahead. Um, Eight. Seven. Okay. So 7 on the phone. Iman on this phone says 7. Iman in the studio says 8. So if we have, let's see, 6 times 8, I know that 6 times 4 is 24. And if I multiply okay. that by two okay. or I double it, I get 48. So you are absolutely correct that 48 divided by six is eight. I'm left with no remainders. So if I can make six groups, I'm going to have eight cars in each one of those groups for a total of 48 cars. Does that answer your question, Iman, on the phone? Yes. All right, so we need to come up with, it says that we need to write a multiplication equation to find the number of uh, cars in a row because mm. I may have how would we do that because what I think now that I'm looking at it a little closer if we're parking 48 cars in a row and there's six cars in each row that tells us how many rows there are but then it says write and solve a multiplication equation to find the number of rows of cars so Division is cool because it kind of can work in reverse. Can you help me out, Iman? Either Iman. Is there a multiplication equation that I could use? 48 plus 48. 48 plus 48? Mm, I don't know if that's multiplication. Oh, I see what you did. You were thinking about undoing the, uh, the subtraction there? That would, if. Ooh, that's another good guess. Iman has one. Iman on, Iman on the phone, could you tell me? What equation I could use that involves the three, these three numbers, 48, 6, and 8? What can six I do with those numbers for multiplication? Say that again. 6 times 8 equals 48. That's nice awesome. Nice, nice. That's Excellent. That's multiplication. So we have six cars in each row, or we have eight, uh, and eight rows for a total of 48 cars. It's kind of cool because it just works backwards. Excellent. 
There we go. And you know what? Iman, you are going to bring a prize to your cousin Iman yeah. at Norwood. Let's see what prize that is. Okay, Iman, you're on. It's time to drop the puck, the pickup prize. There it goes. Where's it going to go? Oh, Ooh. that's a puck. Nice, nice, nice. What does that look like? You want to hold it up for us? Ooh, very Show pretty. Oh, well, that'll go right in the binder. I love it. Guess what, guys? Mary from Pinewood's on the phone. She's in third grade, too. Oh, hi. Hi, Mary. Oh, hi. How are you this, this evening? Hi, Mary. Good. You know, there's somebody that you might know that I know very well. Do you <laughs> have a daddy named Alex? Yes. Well, that is awesome. I also have a daddy named Alex. That's really cool. We have that in common. But there's also <laughs> something else in common. Does your daddy like music? Yes. That's really cool because he teaches music at Mr. Cook's school at Warren. So you're really lucky because you get to have him at home. I only get him like once or twice a week. <laughs> but I guess I'm the lucky one. Maybe that's what it is. But anyway, Mary from Pinewood in grade three. Do you have a, a problem that we could solve for you? Yeah. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. 380 times two. 380? 380. Times. And you said? She said times. Times two. Oh my gosh, what a good big job. number. You're a good listener. Hmm. Well, how are we gonna approach this, Imam? What do you think? Skip That's count by twos, 380 times. Well, I better get started. Two, I don't have time for that. Mary, four, That's six. At Pinewood, Mary, do they uh, teach you? Do you teach? Um, do they teach at Pinewood, Mary, the like the algorithm set up like you here, you see here, or do they use something like a, an area model? I'm just calling in. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Well, perfect. So, um, so we have it set up as 380 times two. Is there any w other way? Like, have you ever set up an area model before, Mary? Uh, no, I don't really think I, I've heard of it. No, you haven't heard? Okay. Hmm. Well, you can take that back to Pinewood and say, I want to know what an area model is. But right now, we can just solve this one just like this. Go ahead. Sure, absolutely. Let's so let's see. Hmm, if I remember my multiplication correct, I'm supposed to multiply this 2 with this 0. Correct. We're and starting I, the ones place. Right, right. And I do remember that any time I multiply a number with 0, I get 0. There we go. So let's move on to the next uh -huh. multiplication. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just agreeing with you. Oh, great, great. <laughs> I'm glad that we agree. We make a great team. So next, I'm going to multiply this 2 with this 8. And i got to think about what I get. It's 16, but hmm, that's two digits. So I'll start off by writing that 1's place, that 6 there. And there's a special spot that I have to put that 1 now. And it's going to carry over to the next question, which is going to be right up here. So it's not going to be 2 times 3 anymore. It's going to be 2 times something else. You still with me, Mary? Oh, uh, yeah. What do you think that's going to be? 2 times what now? Um. Do we add the one afterwards, or do we change it to a, do we just, we do three times two and then add the one, or was there something else that we were doing? Can you uh, repeat what you said? <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, so I multiplied that eight in 380 by two, and I was kind of curious, what, what do I do with that one now? Um, I, I'm not totally sure. OK, OK, that's great. I'm, I'm happy there. that you admit that. That's amazing. Hey, you're in my way. Well, uh-oh. I think you add it. I, I think, think you, you do add the one to it. You're Mr. right. Cope, After you, you solve it. it, you're right. I've been around this fat homework helpers for a while now, and I think <laughs> that's what you do. All am right, I Polly. Right? Am I right? I'm right. I am. You are absolutely right, Polly. Thank, Thank you. you. Tell Max I was right, would you? <laughs> Will do. OK. So we're going to start off with that 2 times 3, which is the lovely number 6, and then we're going to uh -huh. increase it by 1. There you go. Sounds so good. two times three, I'm going to do a little side math here, six, and then we're going to add one to it, and we're going to get a seven in this slot. So it looks like if everything is good up here, 380 times two is 760. Yay! Does that answer your question, Mary? Yeah. Awesome. Well, you know what? I think Iman is going to drop our puck right now, and 
maybe Daddy can bring you home a prize. Does that sound cool? Yeah, that sounds cool. All Time right, to let's see. Excellent, anyone. excellent. Drop that Pokemon. There it goes. Oh. Flashlight. The USB light. Oh, nice. So you get to nice, plug it nice. into your tablet or your computer. I know. It shines so super cool. bright. Wait, do you need a computer to use that? Because I don't have a computer back here. Uh oh. Well, hmm. I, I want one of those. We'll have to find something else to make some light. Oh, Maybe oh, Max can build I a fire that, or something. Will Max <laughs> bring me a computer? That and He then, might want to do those too. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Okay. Hey, well, it's Jamie. Oh, Hi. Javier, is that hey, you? Hey, Javier. Hi. All right, do you have another question for us? We can hear you so much better. Yes, yeah, four. Number, number four. four. Could you read it to me? Mr. Cook struggles with his reading. <laughs> around to 800 feet away, around to the nearest 600. Choose all that at E. Half a bullet. Yeah. Apply? Is that the way we're choosing all the ones that apply? Is that correct? Uh, it's A P P L E. L E. Apply. Oh, you know what? Apply. apply. Uh, you got it. You got apply. it. So apply. we have a, a couple of different numbers here, guys. Check this out. We have 805. We also yeah. have 850. <laughs> we have 845. Mm -hmm. 745. And what was that last one, Javier? Um, 750. 750, mm. awesome. Whoa! So, That's Javier, at Norwood in third grade, do they teach you any really cool tricks when rounding to the nearest hundred? Yes. yes. You, okay, can you talk to me about them? It's like where you have, you know how you, like, you draw a number line? I do, I know how to draw a number line, I think. When you draw a number line, you put a line in on the at the end, and then you put like a um um. That's I think a very I'm, I good think I understand line. what you're saying. A, a, a line that goes over at uh -oh. the top. Okay. Um. And well, let's see. Line next to, and you put a line that's over for the two. And Got then it. One at, the, at the end. Okay. Two. So let's see. Take a line that's over. Okay, I think I'm following what you're saying. And so, if I am looking at these numbers, I know that they right now are in between 700 and 800, and they might have to round up to 900, I'm not sure. So, <clears throat> for the first one, I have 805. What I like to do is I like to draw a line underneath of the place value that I'm looking at, yep. and the place value directly to the right, yeah. That's going to tell me whether that 8 stays in 8, or is it going to round up to 900? So that probably, 0 probably stays in 8. Probably stays in 8. I think you're probably right. If I was to plot this on the number line, it's going to be closer to 800 on my number line. And so yeah. you're absolutely right. That That's 805 right. is just going to round to 800. Mm -hmm. So if that's the one that you're looking for, make sure you shade that one in for no the first one, OK? OK. Talk to me about 850. I have 8, and then the place value next to it has a 5 in it. What, the, yep. what do you think is going to happen uh, with that one? Probably, it's probably going to change to probably, probably 900. OK, I think you're right. So 850 is going to stop right around there. And yep. anything on this side of the number line, you're absolutely right, is going to round all the way up to 900. Yep, I know that for one thing. Well, I'm glad we know that. That's for sure, man. Well, 845, I don't, that's, that's pretty close to 850. Yep. But what's different hmm. about this one? What's one? 845. What, how is that different? That's going to round to 800. And why is that? Because it's, it's not going to go to the other side. Good. It's, it's still going to go backwards. You're exactly right. That 4 makes 845 closer to 800 than it would be oh. in terms of being closer to 900. Oh. So 845 is going to round to 800. Yep. Can you take care of the rest of these? My voice is going harsh. I'd be happy to. Do you mind taking care of the rest of them for me? 
Yes, let's take a look, Javier, at 745. Yes. So I'm going to start with that same strategy. I'm going to underline that hundreds yes. place. And I really like the idea of drawing an arrow yes. over to the four. I really like that. I might yes. start doing that. What are we going to do with that four? What does that tell us about how we're going to round this? It tells us, oh, are you talking about 700? No, I've got 745. 745. That's going to round to 700. Nice, nice. And what told you that? It's because it's, you have like the 845. It's going to do the same thing. Nice. So I, I like the idea here. You looked at an example that we already did, and Perfect. you kind of saw that pattern and used it for 745. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's Good great. Good strategy. Now, when I look at 750, I kind of get a similar idea here. I still want to use my strategy, though, because I know that it will work no matter what. The second one, it's the same thing. It was nice, just like nice. the second one. Whoop. Jay, just like you 850. you really are good at this. You're good at math. You should be a math teacher, too. You're a future Mr. Cook. What do you think about that? I think that would be awesome. Yeah. You can come take over for me at Warren. You could be on Math Homework Helpers one day. That's like, funny. in person. Great job, Javier. Great job. Did you have any other questions about rounding? Yeah, but what one's the right one? Hmm. All right, so we have to choose the ones that are all that round to 800, correct? Oh, I see, I see. So was this A, B, C, D, and E? That goes to the nearest hundred. And I think they're all the, that goes to the, I think they're, they all go to the nearest hundred. Your numbers and see which one. So which ones round to 800? It looks like 805 went to 800. So now I starred those because they were similar. Let me erase those stars. I don't want to confuse you. So it looks like. They're not. They're not. Eight, good, good, good. So it looks like 800 there. So shade from that 805. One in. 850, that's, we don't want to choose that one. That one rounded up and to 950 rounds to the nearest 100. Which is the nearest, you're right, 800. Perfect. Very and good. is there any other ones that we did? We missed um, 845. Right. Beautiful. You found needed, all three of them. So those are definitely the ones you want to check. <laughs> yep, that's good. That's three. Great, I agree. Okay, Mr. Cook, Javier. do you agree? You know what? We're gonna because you did such a great job and called in a second time. Iman's gonna make a prize happen for you. Let's see. Yeah, let's do it, Iman. Time to drop that puck. Puck to pick a prize. Oh, she's dropping two. Oh, oh, oh bonus shoes. round. Double. Oh my gosh, they're both the same. Oh, <laughs> that's the USB light for you. USB light. All right, the USB light's coming to you, bud. Excellent. Very oh, cool. Great. Thank you so much for your call. Bye. 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 <laughs> Are we ready for All right. another caller? I, th I think so. OK, get that board clear, because here we go. It's Trade Dylan. Places. Sure. Dylan from Norwood. Hey, I bet Iman knows you too, Dylan. Do you know Iman, Dylan? Yeah. Yeah? Are <laughs> you in the same class? Yeah. Oh, cool. Which number are we doing for you today? Number three. Number, number three. three. Which one's that, Mr. Cook? This is a tough one. Oh, this no. is where we can put it in something about uh, expanded form. Dylan, could you read the problem for us, please? Francisco wants to find 533 slash 324 using place value which shows the correct way to break apart this addition problem. All right, so let's, let's figure this out together. So we have 533 plus 324, and we need to break it apart to show how we can use expanded form. Does your teacher use that, in, uh, that mathematical term, expanded form? Yeah. All right, so we need to figure out what these, are, what these numbers are in expanded form. So let's break up 533 first. What's our first digit we have, and what place value does it fall in? Five. Perfect. And how do I represent that with the five being in the hundreds place? How many zeros do I put after that five? Two. Perfect. 
Then um, I know that I have a three in the tens place and a three in the ones place. Do you agree, Dylan, that 533? Yeah. It looks just like that on expanded notation, an expanded form? Yeah. Awesome. So now I'm going to use the pen because I keep messing up. Let's try this one. So now I have 324, and I'm going to do the same exact thing, but this time, instead of five in the ones place, or excuse me, in the hundreds place, I have a three, I have a two in the tens, and a four in the ones. So now, uh, unfortunately, that is not the end of our problem. We still need to take it one step further, Dylan. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. So what two, or let me try that again. What am I going to add 500 to? 300. Perfect. So I have 500 and 300. That's my first expanded form strategy that I'm going to use. And then uh, next, what am I going to add together? 30 plus 20. Perfect. And then at the end, I'm adding up the ones. At three plus what? Four. Perfect. Now take a look at your options. Is there a choice that shows that expanded form, those two different expanded forms being added together? Is that an answer choice that you have on your paper? Yeah. Perfect. What letter was it? B. Okay, well, Norwood B. friends in third grade, looks like we almost got all of their homework done today oh, so far. Hey. We only have to do it couple questions on their own. So take uh, tomorrow, go in and talk to your teacher and tell them that you can do that one on the board. How about that, Dylan? <laughs> on the board? For real? That would be cool. Wow. And speaking of tomorrow. It's your practice at your summer It is. All right. Inside you. Drop that puck. Go. Go puck. Go. Lanyard. <coughs> hey, Dylan, you're Perfect. getting a Yeah. All right. You have nice. a good night, buddy. Thanks for calling. Okay. Oh, we have a new caller. Are you ready, guys? You okay. ready? Please, Here yes. We go. Is this Mamie? Mamie? Mamie from Wellwood, and she's a third grader, too. It's like all third grade around here. <laughs> awesome. So hey, hi, Mamie. Mamie. How are you? Good. Do you have a question for us? Yes. All right. Let's hear it. Um, 80 divided by 4. 80 divided by 4. 80, whoops. So we have 80 divided by 4. So a lot of the problems we did today were through math. I wonder if there's another strategy that we can use. Because I'm, I'm not a fan of maybe writing it out. Maybe I'm a fan of seeing my problem. So I want to take this 80 divided by 4 and draw a picture with it. So hmm, how am I going to do that? If I take a nice big chunk and I divide it up. Oh, this is going to be a lot of them. Let's see. Is that at least the four? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Guess I have to extend that a little bit. Hmm. That's not going to do it yet. That's not enough. I need more. I'm going to take this over here. Well, good thing you know what you're doing with this thing. Wow, <laughs> I wouldn't be look able at to. That. I want to make sure that I have 80 cubes on here. So instead of four, I need way more than that. Ooh. Wow. Let's see. Look at that. Look at that drawing. You're an artist Ooh, and a mathematician. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. I got 80 squares up there. But I'm trying squares. to divide this into four equal pieces. Man, that's a mess. So I'm trying to think of strategies here. I could go through and I could count. By fours, I could do a skip counting strategy. You could. But now that I have this nice and drawn, I'm thinking of something different. How can I group this? Hmm. Well, let's see. If I try to find some sort of way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, that's eight. I can split this up pretty easy. Here's one. Here's two. I'm going to change colors. Three. Four. The idea here is I'm trying to just find out a way that I can split this up into equal pieces. Okay. That's all I want to do. We got one more, right? Let's use pink. 
Okay. Absolutely. So we have four different colors, and that represents the four different groups. Yep, we have some here, some here. And as long as all of these are equal, I think visually my division problem is solved. So if I took my 80 and split it up into one, two, three, four equal pieces, all I have to do is figure out how much each piece here has. Wow. And I could go through with my squares and I could count. I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Wow. If I take my 80 and I split it up into four equal pieces, it looks like I get 20. That's perfect. And you didn't do any mathematical arithmetic at all, did you? Sometimes, sometimes I try to avoid it. I try to find another way to solve my problem. I bet our teachers would really like that. <laughs> I think they I would. Think what do you think, would. Polly? Do you like, like that? To draw. I like to draw, too. Yeah, and I like to do math. That's why I'm here. And I also like to have snowball fights. Though you guys thought they were snowball fights. You're so silly. <laughs> we are. But you know what's hey. not silly is coming up with a, a way, another way to solve this problem. That's a good and way to check your answer, too. You did too. a great job with that. And you know what time it is, Mamie? I, I know. Mamie, yes. guess what? Yes. All right. Prize. Let's go, Amon. Okay. USB light. Nice. Those are popular tonight. It's a USB light. They are. Light. Been... Thanks for calling. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, Mamie. Have a good week. Bye. Take care. You so we have a really special guest. And you know what? We use math in so many ways. Check this out. Not just in the math class. We're going to head out to the streets of BCPS to see who Maria is talking to now. What's going on, Maria? Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here with Mr. Crothermill, a teacher of La Educación Física, which is physical education at Lyons Mill Elementary. How do you use math in phys ed? Well, hello, Maria. Thanks so much for coming by today. Math is integrated in many areas of physical education. To name a few, we use math to measure field sizes, determine averages, calculate play 60 data, compare fitness gram scores, and calculate our heart rate. Wow, can you tell me more about how to calculate my heart rate? Well, of course. During physical activity time, I ask my students to work in their target heart rate zone. In this zone, your body benefits more from your exercise, and it's an intensity level where your heart beats at 60 to 80% of your maximum heart rate. Your maximum heart rate is how fast your heart can beat in 60 seconds or one minute. First, we have to determine your maximum heart rate with this calculation. 220 minus your age. Can I ask you how old you are, Maria? Well, you're never supposed to ask a puppet's age, so let's just say I'm 10. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Well, great. So your maximum heart rate is 210 beats per minute. Now we need to calculate 60% and 80% of 210. In order to find the percentage of a number, we need to multiply by the percentage and then divide by 100. Here's how we calculate 60% and 80%. 60%, we take 210 times 60, which equals 12,600. And then we take that 12,600, divide it by 100 in order to get 126. For 80%, we take 210 times 80, which equals 16,800. And then we take 16,800, divide by 100, which gives us 168. Now we know, Maria, that your target heart rate zone is between 126 and 168 beats per minute. Wow, who knew? So how do I know if I'm in my target heart rate zone? Well, you need to do some more math to determine how fast your heart is beating right now. So that's called your heart rate. First, we take two fingers and we place them gently on our carotid artery in order to feel our pulse. You should be able to feel blood pumping through that artery. We're gonna count our pulse for 15 seconds and multiply that number by four to determine our heart rate over 60 seconds. How many times did you feel your pulse, Maria? I felt it 20 times. If I do the math and multiply by four, then my heart rate is 80 beats per minute. But 
wait a minute, my heart rate isn't my target heart rate zone. So that's a great observation, Maria. That's because we're at rest right now. So if we perform some physical activity, I bet you can get your heart rate in the target heart rate zone. Do you want to try? Yes, vamos. So let's check now. How many times did you feel your pulse this time? 40 times since we counted for 15 seconds and I need to multiply by four. 40 times four, my heart rate is currently 160. I made it into my heart rate zone. Thanks for all the math and the exercise. Thanks for stopping by, Maria. I hope that you can come back again. Can I get a fist bump? All right. Well, thanks, Maria. That was awesome. That was really cool to see how math is even in PE. That's great. Well, so I was, uh, during Valentine's Day, I went and got some flowers for my wife. I, I scored a big on that one. You're such and a sweetie. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. I definitely <laughs> scored some points. And so I thought it would be awesome if we could do sort of like a math problem that relates to Valentine's Day. Good and idea. Uh, I have this problem here. Iman, okay, could you read it. it for us nice and loud with a big, big, loud voice? A flower shop has 426 flowers. Good job. This week, they sell 285 flowers. At the end of the week, the shop gets a delivery of 310 more flowers. How many flowers does, a, does the flower shop have each week? Good job, job. Iman. I'm good. I'm Excellent. I'm amazed by your reading skills. That's that fantastic. Good. That good. Good. Her fluency, good her, her speed, yeah. that was fantastic. She's a good reader. Too. I agree. Definitely. So we need to use uh, a certain operation to solve this. And I'm trying to think, based on what it says, it sounds like we might need to do multiple operations. What? I do okay. know that we're going to start with <laughs> 426 flowers. So I have 426 flowers. And it says, this week they sell 285 flowers. If I'm selling, Polly, what operation do you think that is? You're selling. You're selling flowers, but I don't want to have an operation. <laughs> no, no operations. No, okay. no medical terms. These are okay. all mathematical terms. No okay. surgery, oh, Polly. Just You're math. safe. You're just safe. Math. I was so scared for a minute. Okay, let's see. I'm going to sell flowers, and I can't. I think it is it addition. If we're going to, we're going to exactly. We're going to subtract. I, I don't know. I think we're going to go with subtraction. Is okay, that okay? Subtraction. You know, yep, Polly. That's I'm what like I was thinking. Uh huh. That's what I said. Didn't I say subtraction? I thought <laughs> I did. You did. You okay. did. See. I, I like that you said addition, though. I mean, that was close to subtraction. It was. I mean, was if I opposite. was the one buying the flowers, it would be addition for me. You would be getting those flowers. You're right. Right, but I'm selling them, so we want to give them away. We are subtracting this amount. Perfect. We might use addition in just a little bit, so hold that thought, Polly, OK? OK. So we have 6 minus 5 in the ones place. We have 1. And then uh, I can't do 2 minus 8. I can't take 8 from 2. So I'm just going to borrow from this guy and regroup. And that becomes a 12, because I'm borrowing 10. And 2 nice, plus nice. 10 is 12. 12 minus 8 is 4. And 3 minus 2 is 1. Now, hmm. Iman read this beautifully. And at the end, it said something about getting a delivery of 310 more flowers. And so I'm wondering, hmm, if we're getting 310 more, that means we're going to add. So that was where our addition comes in. Yeah, I said okay. that too. I said you did nice. say addition. I You're did. absolutely right. So let's try this. Now that we're adding, I think I'm just, I can just go right through. I don't have to worry about any regrouping or anything like that. So 4 plus 1 is 5. And this flower shop, by the end, has 451 flowers. And I always like to label my answer. I always make sure we label. Is and that cursive? I was going to say, I bet I friends haven't seen cursive in forever, but in my classroom, <laughs> they will see it. I love so it. they have to learn I it. I yep. love cursive writing. That would be a it's fun a way to write your units. It's, it's flowers, a very, it's very pretty. pretty written flowers. that way. Oh. And we have to make sure we label that because it's not 451 students or oh. imans. That would be a lot of imans. 451 nice. plates of spaghetti. No, it's 451 flowers that we have. At we do day. have the flowers. You're absolutely right. And so. I was just thinking, would it be okay, Polly, if we go in and check in with your friend Maria one <gasps> more time? That's a great idea because that math on the street was so much 
It Rick, really we was. Do it one. was. It was. I had no another. idea. Hi, Maria. Let's go say hi to Maria. Maria. All right, we're gonna send it out to Maria. Here Maria. Here we go, Maria. Take us back on the streets. <laughs> On the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here with Kimberly Panchagar, an art teacher at Stemmers Run Middle School. Miss Panchagar, is math really a part of art? Hello, Maria. Thanks for coming to Summer's Run. And it sure is. I'm going to show you an example. <gasps> Great. Let's hear it. Maria, do you know what primary colors are? Mmm, not really. Primary colors are the three main colors on the color wheel, red, blue, and yellow, that all of the other colors come from. By mixing primary colors together, we get brand new colors, like purple, green, and orange. In fact, artist Pablo Picasso had three different recipes for mixing colors. Let's look at how he would make the color green. Okay. Here's where the math comes in. So recipe one says that one part of blue with three parts of yellow, or in other words, one to three. Recipe two says four parts of blue with eight parts of yellow, or four to eight. This is also one half. And recipe three is three parts of blue with five parts of yellow, three to five. The more blue paint we have in our ratio determines how dark the green paint is. And this works for all colors. Oh, wow, I see. So that's just one example of how math and art work together. Ratios, colors, wow, I've learned so much. I love art. Thanks for stopping by, Maria, and please come back again. Okay, adios. Thank you, Maria. That was really cool, wasn't it? That was awesome. Yeah, that absolutely. Was awesome. That gives me paint. an idea to do with I my students. I didn't know you could paint. Is that paint by numbers? Uh, it was similar. It was they were using ratios, and de depending on how they mix the paint and the uh, the ratio that they had listed determines the type of uh, color that was coming out. It was awesome. Wow. I had no idea that they had that. That's so cool. So um, it was. It was. I want to try that. So I I was looking through and I realized this problem was really really tough. <gasps> I was hoping that you could take care of this for us because I know you teach high school. Yes, this is a very tough problem, and I think that you know I can hopefully try to find a way to make it just a little bit easier while we wait for some callers. Iman, would you like to read this out loud? I'll get closer so they can hear you. Of course. <laughs> a 135-page notebook has 33 writing lines on each page. What is the total number of writing lines in the end table? Right, so we have this entire notebook and we're trying to figure out the total number of lines. Yes, and I like absolutely. how you highlight certain information. Yeah, in high school it's very, very important to take your problem and kind of find that important information. So when I see this word problem, my eyes are immediately drawn to the numbers and I know that I'm gonna use them. 135 page notebook and 33 writing lines, those are gonna be the numbers that we use. Hey, now, that's polycolor. What was that? Polycolor. It is. It is a poly color. <laughs> well, I was just thinking of you, Polly. I, I, I couldn't help myself. I, I like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Keep going. I was just so excited. She's distracted by pink. That's okay. I know. Right? I better be. I got to keep that in mind. Okay. So I could draw a picture here. I could draw 135 pages and draw 33 lines, and I could count them up. Whoa, that'd be tough. That, that would be a, tough, and it would be a lot. I think so we'd I, run out of, out of show time for that one. I think so, too. So maybe this example is not the best one to do a picture with. Maybe we want to go back to good old-fashioned pen and paper math here. I'm thinking about what operation I want to use here. 135 pages and each has 33 lines. What operation does that sound like? It's got to be multiplication. I was going to say that. I was going to say multiplication. See, everybody had their hand raised. You guys all say Good multiplication? Job. We did. Yeah, we Excellent. All said it. So Let's I'm going to multiply those two numbers. One third. Oh. Uh oh. I can't, can't do my math in highlighter. I have to do it in pen. We need pen. 135 multiplied with 33. I don't know why that switched back to white, but that is okay. Now we're going to go Mr. ahead Cook and multiply these. Mr. Cook can see that a lot better now that it's in white anyway, so that's okay. You think so? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's perfect. I'll make sure that it stays the same. All right, got to fig figure out how to multiply this. This 3 that's conveniently white is going to be the first number that I use. 3 times 5 is the lovely number 15. 
So now I'm thinking back to those other multiplication examples that we did. I know that I have to multiply this 3 with the second 3 there in 135. 3 times 3 is 9. And then what do we do with that 1? Add it. We add it up. Absolutely. You're but right. wait a second. Hold up. That means that this becomes a two-digit number. So after I used this 1, this was 10. It looks like I have another 1 to worry about. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So now I'm going to take that 3, which is in white, multiply it with the 1 to get 3, add that 1 at the top, and this becomes, so far, 405. So tell me why you uh, crossed off those ones that when you regrouped it. Oh, that's a great question. So my personal strategy is that anytime I use a number and I don't want to get distracted by it and I don't want to use it again, I just go ahead and scribble it out because sometimes I might get a little distracted. Maybe my friend next to me was talking to me while I was doing the problem. Once I focus back in on the problem, though, I want to be like, oh, OK, I already used that one. 3 times 3 was 9, plus 1, I've used it, is 10. And that's my, that's my tip to you. Oh, that makes sense. So that when you go to the next place value, the other 3 in the 10s place, and you're doing your multiplication, you won't have those left over from before. Absolutely. That makes sense. Okay, I wasn't cool. even thinking of, about that. That was a great foresight to think about something that I might encounter in the future here. It looks like you might encounter that. So I, I just to so. double check, you might have the same answers. So It might be similar because I am multiplying will. by this 3 again. But one thing is different. This 3 is kind of like 30 because it's in the tens place. So oh. I know that when I multiply by this, I have to make sure that there is a 0 here. Perfect. Because that is that's a definite that's placeholder. Good tip. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's see. Oh, well, I did all this math already. So maybe I can do it quickly. 3 times 5? 15. 15. 15, beautiful. What do I do with the 1, Polly? Carry it. Lovely. So now I have a new 1 up here. Man, it is really good that I scratched out those 1s. Good idea. I'd have 1s all over the place. 3 times 3? Hmm. Nice. But then we got to carry the 1, and now, or add the 1 that we carried Five. before. It's uh, 10. I think it's 10. You is got it, right? Polly. OK, good job. Good job. So we have a new 1 to carry. Oh, man, this did become a mess, huh? So the last multiplication is 3 times the 1. Three. Which is? Three. Now add a one to that, Polly. Four. Excellent. That's awesome job. I can't wait till you guys have to tell Max how smart I am. <laughs> you are very <laughs> smart. You're so proud of me. You are absolutely so smart. Super proud. Now, now that number was very similar. So multiplying by that three there, I see a pattern that maybe could help me out in the future. Nice. Okay. Nice. And well, so I think yet. we take those products, those partial products of each one of those, and I'm pretty sure, Iman, what do we do with those numbers now? Do you know? We add them up. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Good thing we Plus. brought him on into the studio today, boys and girls. And I don't know what we would do with that. Answer. Knows the answer. She's Let's a see. Smarty. Five and zero. We got five. Zero and five this we time. We got five again. Four and zero. We got four. And then this four, what do we do with it? Drop it like it's hot. Oh. Absolutely. Yep. 44, like 55. 4,455 lines in that notebook. Now, if you don't believe me, go find a notebook. Count up all 135 of your pages and count 33 lines and tell me if you get the same number. Oh, that Guess might what? take a little I'm while. I'm hoping you do. Guess what? Guess what? We have Georgie on the phone. Georgie. Georgie. Georgie, yeah, from Clinton Elementary School. Oh, right. Hey, nice, Georgie. nice. I love when we get callers. Hey, hi, Georgie. Hi. Hi. So, Georgie, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Let's all right. Hear it. What grade are you in, Georgie? I'm in fourth grade. Fourth Ooh, grade, awesome. I'm a fourth grader today. That's fantastic. This might be a hard one. I bet. I'll see. Let's hear it, Georgie. Okay. I have negative one, negative eight, positive one, positive eight. Okay. And what are we going to do with these? First, you want to add the negative. So, and then keep going. So, talk to me about we have negative one, negative eight. Is it an addition problem? Is it a subtraction problem? What uh, operation does it say to do on your on your paper? It says to use both. Use both. Okay. So, are we practicing adding and subtracting these positive and negative numbers? Yes. Okay. Okay, I think we have time to try a couple of these examples. I real think quick. so too. Um, so if we have negative one, I always think of it as money. Like if I owe someone one dollar, I'm in the hole for one dollar. Absolutely. And then if I borrow another eight, it's that's like negative eight dollars right there. So, so it's kind of like if this was zero, 
negative one, you're already below Correct. where you started. And you're saying if I borrow eight more dollars, I'm not going up and increasing my amounts. No. I'm going farther down by eight. Absolutely. So I'm in the nice. hole for now, like if I was thinking about it, eight and one, that means I'm in the hole for nine dollars. And that if I'm owing somebody nine dollars, that means I have negative nine dollars. And that's if I add those two together. And right, then right. same thing with here, one and not one plus nine. This is gonna be or one plus eight, excuse me. It's going to be 9, but because they weren't negative, my 9 is going to be positive. So, Georgie, hey, did you say that we could also do something with negative 1 and positive 8? We have to make this quick because yes. we want to okay. talk to Puck. This is so our last one. Let's say I, have, uh, I owe someone a dollar, but then I got 8 bucks. I still got to pay that guy back. You do, so that first dollar from that 8 is going to put you back to 0. Perfect. And then how much do I have to go up now? I What's think left I have over? Seven, seven left over. One, two, three, four. I'm not tall enough. Five, oh six, seven. All the way up to the lights. Perfect. Okay, so let's drop that puck, guys. I think that was perfect. Thank you so, so much for your call, Georgie. Georgie, we got negative nine, nine, and seven. But not only that, we have Iman, go, Iman with the last Iman. Let's do it. puck. Let's hit it. We have a lanyard nice. or a squishy guy. Oh, which one do you want? I can get a lanyard. You a could. Lanyard. All right, Georgia, All right. you got it, my friend. You could and you can. lanyard's coming your way. That was awesome. And you know what? That was awesome. This show, this was great. This was Polly, a great show. Polly, I really show. enjoyed my time with you. This was great. So I appreciate fun. having you on today. That was fantastic. It was very nice. It was and nice to meet you guys. It was nice to meet you. And you know what, boys and girls, that's all the time, unfortunately, that we have this week. We just want to thank you for tuning in. And remember, we do re-air each episode, so be sure to watch. We look forward to seeing you next time. Only, Only here, here on BCPS TV. TV.